my name is Madison and welcome back to my channel. Y'all, if I'm being completely honest, I don't want to make this video. It's not that I don't want to make this video, it's that I don't want to do what I have to do for this video. Um, basically, it is currently 9.30 a.m. I finished class and finals yesterday, so yesterday was my last day of finals. I'm done for the semester, except I'm not, because I have four grad applications due in 12 and a half hours that I am nowhere close to finishing. Um, up until this point, I have been pretty on top of my game with applying to grad school, doing it early, getting everything sent in before hella last minute. Um, but with finals and everything, and like final projects, exams. I'm a TA so I also have to grade exams. I just have no time. Um, and I kind of have one of those mindsets where there are some things that I will not let myself rest until I know, until it's done. So basically I knew that if I gave myself 12 hours to finish it, they'd get done. It would happen. It might not be my best work, but it's getting done. Either way, before we get started with today's video, I just want to give a huge shout out to College Essay Guy. I've mentioned College Essay Guy before, but College Essay Guy is a fantastic resource for everyone in the college application space, whether you are a student, parent, counselor, whatnot. Um, they have a ton of free like resources and then paid courses on everything from picking out a college list, um, financial help, college application, you know, um, like general overview sort of thing, writing a personal statement. They have specific courses on applying to the UC schools and their essays. So whatever you need, they have a ton of resources for, like I said, I'm applying to grad schools. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment, but I have been using a ton of their um, resources. Like I said, they have free resources as well as paid courses and one-on-one -on -one courses if you want to sit down and talk to one of their, um, experts and their college application experts to help you walk through your application um, for undergrad or grad school and no matter what you're studying they have a ton of great awesome resources i highly recommend you take advantage of so i will have everything linked down below um, if you use code madison you do get 10 percent off which is um pretty cool so like i said i am Applying to grad schools right now, um, a little bit of an overview. I'm currently a senior at CU Boulder studying aerospace engineering. Um, I'm applying to grad school. I'm applying to PhD programs. Um, I get a lot of questions about why I want to go get my PhD. First things first, I do not see myself having a nine to five job in six months. Like I have friends that have already signed and accepted offers for full-time jobs starting after graduation. I don't, I don't know if you could pay me any amount of money to go do that right now. Um, well, <laughs> you probably could, but I have been doing research for two years. Um, I've been at the research lab I worked for for about two years now. I love it. I have not had a ton of time to put into it lately as much as I have had some other semesters just with college applications and being a teaching assistant. Um, but regardless, I think research is so cool. Um, I want to be a professor someday. I want to teach. I want to do research. I want the flexibility or not the flexibility, but the What's the word I guess like lack of routine that being a professor has every semester looks different You're teaching different classes every semester. Even if you're teaching the same class every semester. It's at a different time every semester um, You're doing work deployments potentially in the summer. You're doing research. You have grad students. You're teaching the whole balance of it i love and i am more than willing to go through grad school and through my phd doing research that i already know that i love taking classes still continuing to learn for the next six or seven years making not very much money if it means i'll get to do that and of course i am really really excited about continuing to do research just because that has become such a big part of my life so i understand that phd isn't for everybody and i know there are different motives with wanting to do it. Mine is definitely more wanting to be a professor. Some people still want to go into industry with their PhD. Um, my long-term goal is to become a professor and keep teaching. So either way, there is that. I am currently, or I am applying to 10 PhD programs for a few different things. Um, <clears throat> I have already submitted CU Boulder, <laughs> CU Boulder, um, UT Austin, Georgia Tech, Stanford and Berkeley. Um, today, 
in like 12 hours. I have MIT, Cornell, Michigan, and Penn State due. And then on December 30th, I have Virginia Tech due. Um, I am applying to 10 schools, which for some people is a lot. For some people, that's not a lot. Um, I don't entirely know what I want to do. So main reasons I'm applying to 10 schools. First off, I've had friends. I have a friend in particular that applied to eight grad schools for his PhD. And the only school he got into was Stanford. Um, that scares me. That scares me like crazy. I by no means have the world's best GPA. I, I do not have a 4.0. I'm proud of my grades. I don't have the greatest grades, but I'm proud of them. Um, and I wouldn't change anything. If I could go do undergrad again, I would not do anything different. Like I said, I don't have the world's greatest grades, but that is heavily in part due to the fact that I led a robotics club for two years. We're now the fastest growing club on campus. Um, that's pretty damn cool. I've done research for a very, very long time. I have been in 12 different states this past summer doing research, which I don't know any other undergrad that can say that other than the one other senior that's in the same lab as me. Um, I'm a teaching assistant. I think getting that experience has been great. I have a horse, so I have a life outside of school. Like I said, I would not do anything different. I have kept myself very busy, but I am a firm, firm believer that there's a lot more to life than school and your grades. To get to grow up and be in a place like Boulder for four years is absolutely fantastic. We have so many great resources around here, whether it's companies you wanna go work for, research labs you wanna be a part of, clubs you wanna join, whether it's a STEM club or not, you know, the mountains are right here. Take advantage of that. And I give tours and if I know I've actually had a lot of you guys on my tours, which is kind of funny. I harp on this so much. There is so much more to life than grades. And I firmly believe that if school doesn't want me because I don't have a 4.0, then frankly, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be in an environment that is going to push me and grill me until I have a 4.0, until I have straight A's. Because like I said, that is not my priority. My priority is learning the content, knowing deep down that I understand what's going on and understanding that I'm grasping the content and also having a balance with my life outside of school. So a little tangent there. Um, as far as the grad schools I'm applying to, like I said, I'm applying to 10. There are three main things I'm applying to. Um, some schools I'm applying directly to their fluid mechanics whether that's in mechanical or aerospace, I'm doing some sort of, I'm applying for some sort of fluid mechanics there. Um, at some schools, this is doing like work on cars. On some schools, this is doing work on um, multi-copters or fixed wing drones. <clears throat> a lot of it is more CFD based, so a lot more experimental, sorry, and a lot, so a lot more computational and theoretical based. Um, some schools I'm applying to something with regards to control theory, robotics, autonomous systems, motion planning, um, path planning, optimization, that sort of thing. This typically either falls in the mechanical department, the computer science department, or the aerospace department. I'm doing some sort of like really heavy robotics. And then at some other schools, the last thing I'm applying for is like hardcore UAV work. Um, so this might be UAV design, this might be UAV motion planning. So there is a little bit of overlap there. Um, but oftentimes it's a lot more experimental based than the other two options. So like I said, fluids, robotics, and then UAV. UAV is a lot more experimental based. The other two are a lot more theoretical and computational. Um, so every school has kind of their thing that I'm attracted to. Um, so ultimately I'm applying to about three schools for each different category, which means that Whatever I decide I like the most, assuming I get in every which I'm definitely not going to, um, I don't have a ton of options. That's also kind of why I'm applying to 10 schools. This video is already 10 minutes long. Maybe I'll make this two videos. <laughs> um, but either way, that is kind of where I'm at. Like I said, I've currently applied to five schools. I still have five more due. Um, as far as PhD applications go, they suck. I'm gonna be completely honest, they suck. I totally thought it'd be a lot easier, a lot less stressful than it has been. Um, everybody I've talked to is like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people I talk to, talk to me about how undergrad applications, there's a lot more like tedious work, I guess you could say, like essays that 
don't really pertain to the program. However, with PhD programs, there is no common app. I have 10 different portals. I have 10 different pass passwords for every single school's application. And what this means is that I'm going through and putting in like my employment history 10 times. I'm going through and I'm putting in my clubs, my personal information, my like demographical information or whatever it's called 10 times which takes so long i hate it i absolutely hate it i'm uploading my transcript and my resume and all that stuff 10 times as far as the the bulk of the application though it is in your personal statement and your supplemental essays um i figured the person sorry i figured the supplemental essays wouldn't be that bad based off of what other people told me i completely disagree um <clears throat> Going back to the personal statement, the personal statement is a one to two page doc, depending on the school, um, where you basically talk about your past experience, whether it's research experience, clubs, whatever you have to talk about, um, how that pertains to your future goals. So specifically what you want to do in grad school and long term what you want to do with your PhD, and then what specific professor you feel you have the qualifications for and which ones you're interested in most. Um, so there's that. Then you move on to your supplemental essays, which of course are a supplement to that. So at a few schools, um, I've had to talk about how I've been discriminated against, which quite frankly is not very hard to talk about. Um, I can knock those out pretty good. I of course already have a few that I've kind of stored away that I can modify and reuse, which is nice, but Unfortunately, there is a lot of stories and things I can talk about for that, which is kind of good and bad. Um, <clears throat> what else? A lot of just, why do you want to go here? Why do you want to get your PhD? Like kind of, I don't want to say repeating what's in the personal st statement, but like building on what's in your personal statement. So um, I don't know. If you're applying to grad school, do not underestimate it because I definitely did. Um, this video is already 12 minutes long, so I'm going to break this up into two videos. Uh, this basically is all about where I'm applying to grad school and why. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm going to end this video and we're going to hop on over to start working on my grad applications. So let's go. And thanks for watching. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>